So, hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar with the lovely Jane and Debbie from Cotswold RDA and Chris from Three Rings. So today we're going to give you a bit of a brief overview and introduction to Three Rings and let you know how it can be used within your group setting. So without further ado, I will hand over to Chris. Well, thanks very much. Um, Three Rings has been going for about 20 years. We're a group of volunteers who um, have progressively developed some software for managing volunteers. And uh, someone came up with the, uh, the tagline this morning, we help the good people to do their good things, which um, seemed like a, a, a nice tagline for um, uh, what we do. And uh, so we provide a web-based system for uh, helping to manage volunteers. And I'm gonna give you a quick, very quick demo of the sort of thing it covers. And uh, then I think Jane is gonna go on to talk about how they've used Three Rings at Cotswold RDA. So if I can, uh, oh, I need to share screen, don't I, sorry. Dum, 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 dum. Oh, I'm joined by my colleague, Mike, who is, is uh, also in on this, so he might jump in from time to time. Um, so, share it's screen. Fine. I, yes, I am here. I'm, I'm, um, I'm on video mute at the moment, so I think. That's fine. By the organiser, which is fine. Thanks, Mike. Um, so, when you log into Three Rings using a, a web browser or a mobile phone or a tablet or anything that can access the internet pretty much. You provide a username and a password and you arrive at uh, what we call our overview page, which is um, has a, a virtual notice board on the left hand side a virtual diary on the right hand side. So the diary is customized for the volunteer who's logged in and normally uh, volunteers will have their own username and password. Uh, you are seeing the screen okay, are you Faye? <laughs> yes, okay, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it just suddenly occurred to me I might be talking into the ether. Um, so we've got a variety of um, different options here. Um, the main thing we need to look at is the rotor. Now, a lot of this is very customizable. Uh, we're logged into a fictitious helpline, um, which I know is different to uh, the way in which the RDAs will use the system, but the, the concept is the same. You've got rotors and subrotors and you can have as many different sub rotors as you like. So I, I, I'm sure Jane will talk to it, but I'm, I know she's set up um, sub rotors for uh, pony walkers and that sort of thing, I think. Um, but uh, shifts can be of any size, they can cover any time period. And so you've got a lot of scope for customizing your rotor here. And then volunteers, you can either assign them to shifts or they can sign themselves up to shifts, depending on how you want to work your rotor. Moving on to the directory, we have a directory of volunteers. I laughingly call this my wall of shame, um, which is really useful if you're trying to remember who's who. Um, and that uh, Emily is the rather elegant young, young lady. Um, now, you can also store information about your volunteers. Now, for those of you who are getting worried about GDPR, you can decide what information you store, who can view that information and who, who can edit that information. So you've got a lot of flexibility here for customizing uh, what you do and how you do it. Okay, so far? We have a comms facility as well, which allows you to 
send out emails or if you choose text messages to uh, your volunteers and um, that will let you keep in touch or help you to keep in touch with your volunteers. We've got a file store which is like an area of disk space for all your volunteers which all your volunteers can access. You can create um, restrictions on that if you want to so you can say that there's certain permissions on folders and that sort of thing um, but uh, that's up to you but that's quite useful for storing fixed information like policies maybe minutes that sort of information in there there's another little facility which probably one of our least used facilities which is called wiki which is intended for collaborative things one charity i used to work with had a little notebook for maintenance tasks in their center and so volunteers could just note down that uh, they had uh, oh the tap in the kitchen's dripping and the maintenance man could come and note down that uh, okay i've fixed it um but like most of the features in three rings if you don't need it, you can turn it off so you can keep the user interface as simple as you like. We've also got a stats function which provides information, statistical information on what's been going on amongst you and your volunteers. Um, <laughs> I certainly can't go through all of these lists, but I'll give you a quick demonstration. Um, and uh, what I can do is create a report showing the shifts that volunteers have done and how many shifts they've done and what type of shift they've done. And if I want, I can sort that report to, so that I can see who's done the most shifts. And that's quick. But donors probably don't want to know about shifts. They probably want to know about how many hours volunteers have done and I can report on that as well if I want. So I can generate a report showing the number of hours the volunteers have done and sort on that. So that gives you the sort of information that you probably need to extract regularly um, on how much your volunteers are doing. The last of these sections, the admin section, is where it is all set up which can be a bit a little bit intimidating but each area is actually well explained so we've got this permissions matrix which looks horrible um, but each of these symbols has an explanation behind it as to what it means so it takes a little bit of setting up and I'm sure Jane will talk more about the, the process they went through to set it up and get it going. Um, but mostly it needs thinking about how your organization uses its volunteers and um, wants to share information and what information they share with whom. So does that give you a very rapid overview of the, the system? Yes, that was absolutely great. Thank you very much, Chris. I'll unshare my screen. Amazing, thank you. Um, so next I will hand over to the lovely Jane and Debbie at uh, Cotswold RDA. Oh, you're just on mute. Oh, there you go, we can hear you. <laughs> Hello, Jane. I'll just sort of give give you a little bit of an idea of where we were. Oh gosh, it was three and a half years or so ago, three or four years ago. Having that pandemic has just sort of makes you it makes you have to think a little a little bit. We um, we're a big RDA centre. We um, at that time had about two hundred and fifty regular volunteers each week. And um, if anyone wasn't going to be here, we had a diary and people will put their names in when they weren't going to be there. So it was it wasn't a very satisfactory way of, of manning our uh, sort of planning our resources. And we could only 
sort of like look ahead and think and panic if we saw that there was an awful lot of names in for a particular day uh, but then we weren't even necessarily sure whether it was the morning or the afternoon and, and, and it was you know quite difficult to manage so we um we thought that there were one or two things that we really wanted. We wanted an online voter that was simple to use. We also wanted to be able to have a, um, a central um, database type thing for our volunteers information as well, so that we had all the contact information. And we started to look around and we, we had the um, the Steam Railway uh, share the race course with us and they had been using an online rotor and we went along yeah. to a, um, a, a sort of training session with them and um, I don't know if you'd get what I mean but it was very geeky and blokey. <laughs> <laughs> it was very complicated and, and um, they have a very different way of running their volunteers because as soon as a train driver ship comes up, then everyone is manically trying to get it. So um, we, we, we don't run in that in, in that same way. And we, we knew we needed to find something that people could engage with easily so that they could be encouraged to put themselves in rather than having that sort of... Um, we, we can't offer sort of train driving shifts here, unfortunately. So I came across Three Rings, the website, and we were just really liked, we liked the look of it, what we could see. We liked the idea that it was a, um, it, it was run by volunteers. So they knew how to, you know, what other volunteers would be looking for. And can I also say that the rates are very good as well? So we, you know, we thought actually this is something that could really work for us. We've got such a wide range, uh, age range of uh, volunteers, all the way from sort of um, teens that are constantly on their phones, all the way through to uh, you know some volunteers in their eighties that didn't actually have maybe didn't have a computer, and so we we needed to be able to find something that could work across all of that range of volunteers. So um, we got in contact with Three Rings and they were very helpful and um, gave us a lot of hand holding to set up the rotor. And I think setting it up initially was the most scariest thing. You have to think very carefully about how you want to structure it, because if you go too crazy and add too many shifts in, then your page is really, really long. So what we did, um, we set up uh, an eight or nine o'clock slot for pony catching and then had a morning shift and then an afternoon shift and an after after school shift and within each of those shifts we'd have all of these roles we'd have the coach the head of day um leaders pony leaders side walkers and team support which is uh more like the role of someone who doesn't really you know maybe sort of helps with hats and does a little bit of stuff on the gallery um so that was our structure that we started to work with and um, Chris and his team helped us get that, you know, there was a lot of hand holding to get that set up. We decided to run with a pilot first because we had, we didn't want to go big bang style because we've got a lot of volunteers. We want to be really, really sure that we knew how it worked and so I could help um, address the questions when they inevitably came to me as to you know when people work I also volunteer on a Wednesday so I was able to recruit a little team on Wednesday and I said could you help me you know tell me what works well what doesn't so and and, and just make sure that this is working before we go live with it so we ran it for about a month yeah. I think before the summer holidays and it was brilliant <laughs> it worked so well so we were really really confident that we could go ahead and launch it um so we launched it in the actually it was the um it was 2019 I think in the autumn of 2019 and um we did a lot of publicity about it we set up um, a, a present, I did a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation. We had um, presentations each day, I think in the morning, yeah. uh, which we run alongside training sessions that we normally have when we get back to riding after some holidays. And I did a 20 minute spiel about how to use three rings and what was going to happen next. And um, also gave everyone handouts so that they knew what to what to to see a bit like the, the screenshots that um, Chris showed us um, so that they knew what they what they were going to see when they went on to three rings and 
I'd say 70% of people were up and running immediately. Some people had already worked out that they could have an app on their phone so they could access it there. Um, there was just a few people that just needed a, a little bit more support. Um, those that either didn't have a computer and so we'd sort of sit down and, and get them set up in the office or um, was a very sort of a very casual IT user and so needed um, needed to be just just to have a little bit more support but it, it's worked fantastically for us we, we 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 really are very pleased with it the other thing that we do do uh, which is very useful is to work out say if we've got a lesson of six then we know we need to have six leaders in that lesson or else we're gonna we're gonna be in trouble so you can set a minimum and maximum number of people that you want in that shift so um you could set a shift in the morning for a minimum of six leaders, a maximum of say 10. Um, but the ones, the minimum number were all red until you filled them up. So you feel, if you've also got um, volunteers that like to do a little bit of casual volunteering, just dipping in, in and out, you can say to them, just go and look on the rotor, wherever there's a red slot, please put yourself in there. Because so it, it, it's gone from the paper diary to something that is, very proactive everyone can get engaged in it and it is so simple to use so we're, we're thrilled with it amazing thank you so much that sounds great and i'm sure a lot of our groups will be a lot with you and be really reassured that it, you've had quite a positive experience by it so um thank you very much both or all uh, so thanks mike jay debbie and chris for your time this afternoon uh, oh there you go chris i think there's there's one more thing we should mention um yeah. there is a cost associated with three rings of course yes. and it depends on the size of the organization the turnover of the organization primarily but typically for rdas it'll be something like 200 250 pounds a year and uh, that's considerably less than most of the other commercial um, options that are around. Um, so uh, I hope it won't turn anyone off the idea of uh, using three rings. Amazing. Thank you for clarifying, Chris. I'm sure a lot of our groups will really appreciate that. So, yeah, thank you very much, everybody. For oh, go on. <laughs> We, we think it's money well spent. I mean, I, I, I have to say I haven't had the, the sort of headspace to look into everything that Three Rings can do. But we do use things like file store. We've got policies on there. We've got volunteer information. So that, and, and we can also use it to uh, announce things like we used it for very much during the pandemic to just sort of reassure people about where we were at that stage and you know, about mask wearing and social distancing. So it's also good for being able to sort of constantly uh, get a message out there as well. Um, but yeah, that, that it, it's, uh, it, it has an awful lot of capability. You know, you can send, uh, I think you can send text from there as well, Chris, am I right? Nod your head. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, you can. We, we, so we we had looked at that, although we do already have a, another. Uh, yeah. So uh, as well as the emails, it can also get more volunteers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. And again, if they have any questions, feel, please feel free to drop me an email and I can either direct you to Chris or the relevant person. Um, so, yeah, hopefully this has helped you all. Uh, as always, feel free to drop me an email if there's anything I can do to help. But thank you very much, all. Really appreciate your time this afternoon. OK, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.